This week on The Splash, we meet some of our community's new leaders. Then we take a look into our history. And later, some big secrets about networking. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. All so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Hi, thank you so much for being with us. I'm Brooke Allen, and you're watching The Splash. As 2019 began, new leadership took order in our community, in Lansing, and also in Washington, D.C. Recently, West Bloomfield High School invited some of our new leaders to meet the residents and discuss the issues. Reporter Lawrence Nyland has the story. Local residents recently made the trip to West Bloomfield High School and were able to get to know some of the government officials who represent their interests in Lansing. The event was entitled Meet Your New Legislators, and it was organized by the West Bloomfield School District Board and the Parent Communications Network. Uh, really, it was a meet and greet of your legislative rep representative, senator, and going over some of the school funding and getting the community's input into that. Uh, we had a presentation about a report that recently came out, uh, the School Finance Collaborative Report, that goes over the recommended uh, funding for uh, pupils and other resources for school districts in Michigan. And investing in children when they are very young not only turns them into better citizens, it also helps to enrich an entire community. To have our students come out of school prepared to go to college or prepared to go into uh, a, a trade or to get a job, we want to make sure our kids are educated. Uh, and that starts at the earliest levels. Inside every community, a school is one of the anchors, one of the most important things is having a good school. If your schools start going south, if they start coming apart and not doing the job, it impacts the entire community. So it really is something that all the community cares about. And both men are ready to take up the fight for the needs of West Bloomfield at the state capitol in Lansing. Well, my goal is, uh, as a representative, to represent uh, con our constituents here and bring those concerns and the voices of the residents in the 39th District to Lansing when we're going over policy, when we're going over funding, to make sure we have the adequate funding, the adequate resources for our community. Well, I'm uh, for the first time on the Education Committee, so I'm going to be able to do a deeper dive in terms of what is going on in policy, what's going on with funding. So I'm basically going to spend some time learning and figuring out what is the direction I want to go in terms of trying to craft legislation. Reporting for The Splash, this is Lawrence Nyland. To find out more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash legislatures. Since 1974, the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society has been hard at work preserving trinkets of our local communities and passing on the stories of our past. One of the highlights of the Historical Society's work is their monthly open houses. Reporter Ryan Younglove has the details. In May 1978 was the start of the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. With their mission of preserving, researching, and stimulating public interest in the history of Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. While many events are held by the Historical Society every year, they also have monthly open houses that take place the second Sunday of every month at the Orchard Lake Museum. Every open house is about a specific subject or time period in the Greater West Bloomfield's history. The most recent open house discussed ice harvesting and how the local lakes provided local residents and businesses with proper refrigeration. Past open houses discussed events such as the tornado of 1976, displaying newspaper articles and quotes from those who witnessed the disaster. Past open houses also showcased vintage holiday cards, such as the Valentine's Day cards from the 1930s showed at the Valentine's Day open house. The next open house is scheduled for February 10th and will discuss vintage indoor board games throughout history. These open houses are free of charge and are an informative look back into the history of the greater West Bloomfield. This has been Ryan Younglow reporting for The Splash. For more information, feel free to stop by our website at civiccentertv.com slash GWBHS Open House. Coming up, we learn to make friends in business and then another episode of Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV.
And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Thank you for being with us on The Splash. I'm Brooke Allen. In every profession, it's important to know a range of people throughout your office and your industry. Recently, the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce invited a special guest to teach its members some tips and tricks on perfecting their networking skills. And we sent reporter Tyler Keefe to learn more. At the West Bloomfield Library, local business owners and budding professionals gathered for a lesson in business prowess with the Chamber of Commerce. The Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce continued their next big thing initiative recently, inviting professionals from across our community to come together to mix, mingle, and learn ways to grow their companies from experts in a variety of areas. The next big thing, BIG, is an acronym for Business Innovation Generator. And these are monthly meetings to offer small to medium-sized businesses information about how to sustain and thrive their businesses. In order to make a company strong, you have to have an expansive network, something expert Abby Kohut hopes to teach local professionals at this seminar. Networking is about making friends. That's it. It's just like kindergarten when mommy dropped you off at the playground and she said, go out and meet a friend. And you went up to little Bobby and you said, hi, my name is Abby and I'd like to be your friend. That's exactly what's going on right now. And if we stop thinking of it as networking, it will be less scary because it's easy to make a friend. You just talk to someone, find out what they're all about, and see if you have anything in common. And if you do, then you talk about it. And that is exactly what West Bloomfield's professional community did. They talked, they mingled, and they broadened their horizons something the Chamber of Commerce is proud to have fostered. I'm always trying to have strategic planning about how these businesses can work together and really support one another because that's what helps our community thrive and be known as a really great place to work, play, and live. People do business with people they know and trust. With some new knowledge and a network of business professionals, it's clear the next big thing is in Greater West Bloomfield. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Tyler Keeft. For more on this story, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash big networking. Now it's time for Sidewalk Talk, where reporter Patrick McElmurray asked the people of Greater West Bloomfield about dating. I've had so many bad first dates, I can't even count. What's your worst first date you've ever been on? I think we went out to we went out to dinner that night actually, and he said, "Okay, um, here, you know, give me your share." And I got up and walked away. So he had to pay, and uh, I think he took a cab home. So we let him in the car. It was terrible. so he was pretty cheap. Very cheap. That's not a good way to start a first date. No. <laughs> I don't know. It's been so many years. I can't remember. <laughs> I've been married for over 60 years, so. So it wasn't with him? No. <laughs> oh, yes. It was a blind date. I, I, he showed up. I was in heels. He was about six inches shorter than me. He took me to some kind of club and got totally drunk, and I was terrified to let him drive me home. <laughs> We had breakfast and it was very awkward because she wasn't very talkative. So it was like me trying to keep on the conversation going, but it's kind of hard when her answers were simply yes or no and nothing detailed. I did it as a favor. I met him at Starbucks. He pulled out a yellow pad and started to interview me. So I politely got up and said, I got to go. It was nice to meet you, but I really need to go. I don't like the interview process. And he really he had a yellow notebook. And was asking me questions, and I was like, no, this isn't going to work. Now, can you describe the worst date you've ever been on? I was living in Miami, and he had these earrings in his ear. And I guess he lost the back of it, and he put an eraser back on it. That turned my stomach, and I wanted to literally leave, leave him at the casino. So there wasn't a second date? Negative. <laughs> <laughs> my mother always encouraged me, meet new girls and what stuff. And then... Uh, well, my worst date was uh, that she set up uh, an arrangement where I met 
supposedly this most beautiful girl in town that grew up in Windsor. So there wasn't that huge a selection. <laughs> Turned out to be the ugliest person I ever came across. I didn't want to upset my mother. <laughs> I didn't want to upset her. It was not a fun evening. <laughs> so there was not a second date? No, they were, <laughs> I, was, I wasn't that happy about just staying on the first date. <laughs> Hmm. Well, one time I was on a date where the guy only talked about other dates that he had been on and how horrible they went. So that didn't speak very well for him. <laughs> I'm Patrick McElmurray. Join us next week for another episode of Sidewalk Talk. Oh, so many stories. For more episodes of Sidewalk Talk on Demand, visit civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. Now it's time for the Civic Center TV event update. We provide you with upcoming events around Greater West Bloomfield. And for more events coming up, visit civiccentertv.com slash events. The new resident open house at West Bloomfield Parks. New resident orientations are being held to introduce our residents to West Bloomfield Township and the services the township offers. The orientation will start in the nature room where you will be introduced to West Bloomfield Parks Animal Ambassadors and then spend a few minutes hearing an overview of their programs and facilities from their recreation superintendent. All residents are welcome and light refreshments will be served. One goodie bag per family given. Please pre-register so we can anticipate attendance. For more information and to register, please visit wbparks.org. Operation Medicine Cabinet, dispose of your expired and or unused prescriptions anonymously, no questions asked. Operation Medicine Cabinet helps keep all of our citizens safer, protecting young people from the harmful misuse of prescription drugs, understanding the needs of seniors, and also the environmental implications related to improper disposal of medications. West Bloomfield Township and the cities of Kego Harbor and Orchard Lake Village are community participants in this program. Drop off your medication at Kego Harbor City Hall Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Orchard Lake City Hall Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. except holidays, and seven days per week at the West Bloomfield Police Department. For more information, visit oakgov.com slash sheriff. Sit to Stay Fit exercise class Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 12 noon at Spirit of Grace Church in West Bloomfield. Help your mind, body, and spirit and improve your strength and balance in this fun exercise class for people of all ages. It costs $4 to attend each class and you can learn more by calling 248-682-0770 or by visiting spiritdrivenchurch.org. Books and Babies, February 1st at 10 a.m. at the West Bloomfield Library. It is never too early to introduce babies to books. Stimulate your baby's brain development through movement, rhyme, finger plays, puppets, books, and creative gross motor skill activities. This is an interactive program designed to build positive communication between baby and caregiver. This class is free to attend, and you can register and find more information online at wblib.org. Join the West Bloomfield Educational Foundation for Casino Night at Edgewood Country Club for the Foundation's annual fundraiser. Enjoy strolling appetizers and music by the great Byron Emotion Band. This is a fun night of casino games galore, including blackjack, roulette, and bingo. There will also be a raffle drawing for $10 to win $10,000. Silent auction raffles galore, followed by late-night pizza and dessert. There is something for everyone. The Foundation provides grants that promote innovative ideas and projects in the classroom that support academic achievement, technology, and the building of leadership skills and good character in our students. Tickets are $35, $75, or $125, depending on registration level, and will rise to $45, $85, and $135 at the door. To find out more information and to register to attend, please visit wbef.org or call 248-865-6463. Kids Night Out, February 9th at 6 p.m. at the Recreation Activity Center. Need a date night? Looking for time with friends or to catch up on life? Kids Night Out is the perfect opportunity to drop your children off at the Nature Room. Kids will enjoy a fun-filled three hours focusing on how animals survive winter. The program will feature games, a snack, and science experiments. Children are invited to come dressed in their PJs. Pre-registration with a camp waiver release form is required and costs $20 for residents and $25 for non-residents. To register, visit wbparks.org. 
And that's this week's highlights. You can find more events online or at civiccentertv.com slash events. See everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be speaking with Helen Jane Peters and Tina Herzberg from the Sylvan Lake Garden Club. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. For every meeting of the West Bloomfield Township Board, join Civic Center TV for a brand new show called West Bloomfield Township Board All Access, airing at 5.30 p.m. Our team will review how to access meeting agendas, go over the key issues on that night's agenda, and talk to township officials about projects happening right here in your hometown. It all happens live at 5.30 p.m. before every meeting of the West Bloomfield Township Board on Civic Center TV and 89.3 WBLD, the all-new Lakes FM. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back. We are joined by Helen Jane Peters and Tina Herzberg from the Sylvan Lake Garden Club. And thank you, ladies, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So the Sylvan Lake Garden Club, uh, tell me what that is. It's a community group where we get together, do some uh, maintenance, in the Memorial Park. Uh, we share a knowledge of gardening, love of nature, um, plantings. Um, what else? Tree, trees. Right. We are so, a tree community. So yes, yeah, Sylvan means trees. Okay. So we want to keep as many trees growing and healthy as possible. And Sylvan Lake is known as the prettiest little city in Michigan. That's so true. I guess the Garden Club is contributing to that. Uh, the Garden Club goes back many years. You guys are going into your 80th year. That's right. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about how it began. Well, it started in 1939, and there were eight ladies that came to the first meeting. And then um, the, by the end of that year, they had 40 members and all ladies from Sylvan Lake. And it was started by Mrs. Jo James, who was a magnificent lady. She, uh, she grew up in a family where her, both of her parents were gardeners, and then her second husband owned a flower shop and a garden. So that was the love of her life. But she also loved birds, and she loved kids, and she did a lot in the community. And she lived to be 102. Wow. Yes, she That's, was amazing. So um, we're... Got the Garden Club is going into its 80th year. Yes. But your mother yes. was a member of the Garden Club, correct? Yes, yeah, she was in the 40s. So uh, we'll go back to this <coughs> mysterious book that's sitting here in a minute. Okay. But there's a lot of history and a lot of the Garden Club that, I mean, you guys do an ice cream social. Yes. Um, so tell me, that's kind of like one of your landmark events, right? That is. That's uh, um, every year in August, we host the community for our annual ice cream social, where it's a gathering of all of the neighbors. We um, have an assortment of cakes where everybody comes for $1.50. You get a plate with a slice of cake, or cookies, or cupcakes, or, or whatever um, the treats are, and a scoop of ice cream. And it's a social event to come mingle with your neighbors. There's and a lot it's of open to everyone? The oh, whole yes. community, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So it's not just the Garden Club, it's to uh, keep everybody uh, neighborly. So <laughs> how long has that been going on, the ice cream social? Since 1965. So a long-standing tradition. Oh, we yes. have quite a yes. bit of yes. long-standing <laughs> right, over going the years. On. So long-standing tradition, and uh, how long have you, you're the president of the Garden I'm Club. I'm the president of the Garden Club. Okay, yep. so how long have you been involved? Um, probably about five or six years maybe seven. Okay. I lose track. Right. And Helen, uh, Jane, you've been involved for how long? And you're the About secretary. About the same length of time, I think. Yeah. I'm the secretary, secretary. yes. Secretary. <coughs> okay. So you two work together. 
and kind of come up, you not only support Sylvan Lake, but you do other things that help. Uh, you mentioned Shop with a Cop this past year, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's events that go on throughout the community. Um, we participate in the uh, Memorial Day Parade. Um, one of our members uh, puts together a, a live wreath for uh, memorializing our veterans. And um, the Ice Cream Social, we have a plant exchange um, in June. And in the fall, we've teamed up with Kegel Harbor, and they do a garden club or a plant exchange. Their garden club um, puts on okay. a plant exchange. So we've got two kind of plant exchanges going throughout so the year. So September and June, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the plant exchange, the ice cream social. Um, you mentioned Memorial Day, and that brings to mind Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. That's kind of your baby, isn't it? Right. right. So tell me about that. Well, it was um, designed by a Michigan State um, student about 25 or 30 years ago. And so I would say within the last five or six years, the Garden Club has taken it on as one of our projects. So we go once a month, on a, usually on a Wednesday or Thursday morning, and work for two hours. We weed and we trim and we plant new flowers and make it be and we spread mulch on the path and we make it look beautiful. So we invite the community and we usually have five or six workers and we now have some men in the group. So right, because that wasn't always the case. No, it wasn't. Yeah, so uh, tell me when that changed. Well, Jim Endress, who you know here at Civic Center TV, was the first man to join the Garden Club. And uh, Tina reminded me this morning that he built a, like a stage for photos at the Ice Cream Social. So our people, 50th Ice Cream Social. So yeah. people could stand behind it and have their family picture taken. Oh, how neat. You know, like a little photo prop. Right, right, like a photo booth, but yep. just mm -hmm. with a backdrop. Yes. Very nice. And so then he, he also, um, did uh, he built a little library that we have in uh, Ferndale Park, and he also built this desk. So <laughs> exactly. He, so. But he was a man that would, if you ask him something, he would say yes before you finish the sentence. Mm -hmm. He just loved to help, and he was a great contributor. And the first man for the Garden Club. That's mm -hmm. right. Now we have five. Now there's five, but yes. it is open. Right? Oh, it's open so for if men, any man no, men like, and women. Okay. Yeah. Yes. What about kids? Are there any kids involved? I mean, kids love digging in the dirt and all of that. Tell me how that we've works. We've got a, not really members, but right. we've had a few participating in our token kids um, <laughs> in our work days on, yeah, in right. the Memorial Park. Right. Because yeah. I would think that um, it would kind of be a family opportunity, mm -hmm. right, to get mm -hmm. together and do some work for the community and participate. And I would say a lot of the good. kids do appreciate the ice cream social. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, I, I yes. might come to that ice cream social. <laughs> yes. Well, so, then, back in the 60s, Mrs. Gavette did have a club just for the children. They planted a seed, and then they would watch it grow, and then they were awarded prizes. Oh, okay. So, they, so they, there was a kid's garden club right. to some degree, right? That's right. Um, so going back to the history, and we said that this book was from, you began in 1939, correct? That's right. Okay, so this book is filled with clippings and pictures. Yes. Is garden it Club's scrapbook. Yeah. Yes. And it's all the way up to this year, or 2018? No, no, I'm really not sure how far it goes, but we have started new scrapbooks with current pictures. But this is the one that goes back to right. 39. And then this on top is the Sylvan Garden Club's book of tested recipes. Yes. From 1944. Um, so... Your mom's recipes are in this. That's right. There's two recipes so there's in two there. there's two recipes. So just to take a look at the history, um, Spanish right rice? At, yes, Spanish rice right at the top. That was a good um, family meal. What the, was your mom's name? Mrs. Mrs. James A. Spark. Okay. The, and, and the ladies back then just went by their father's or their husband's name. It was a lot of, in our old books, we don't have the first names at all. Really? Yes. So they're Isn't just right? identified by their last name, yes. which was their husband. Well, and or, his first name even was oh. in our little booklets. So we oh, know. Yes. The, it says Mrs. Earl Knapp, mm -hmm. um, Mrs. C.I. Humphreys, and then Mrs. J.A. Spark. Uh -huh. So that would be your mom. Right. With right. her Spanish, uh, Spanish rice recipe. Right. So a lot of history involved in the Garden Club. Just tell me what it means to you to be a part of this. 
Well, it's kind of a legacy for me, I guess, because of my mother being in the garden club. And I was really never a gardener growing up. Um, you know, I helped, I'm sure I mowed the lawn at times, but um, we didn't, my mother was a love, wonderful gardener. She loved to pl uh, play in the dirt, as I would, we would say. <laughs> Did you have vegetables and things growing in, the, in your yard? No, no we just didn't. Just flowers? Yeah. Just flowers. Just flowers. Mm -hmm. So it's a legacy to you. How about you, Tina? It's a way of getting to know the neighbors for me, um, being involved in some of the other parts of the community since um, I've moved here. I've really gotten to know more of the, the neighbors. So. So when are your meetings? They're Friday afternoon, usually at 1 o'clock at the community center. Once a month, usually the third um, Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so third Friday, 1 o'clock. Yes. And when is your next event coming up? The ice cream social in August and plant exchange in June. What else and September. Have? And September. Okay, so we've got a lot of events to look forward to oh, because... Yes. As we speak, you know, there's a lot of nasty weather swirling around us since we're yes. in the middle of January, oh, almost the end of January, oh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, listen, ladies, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure, and the history and legacy of the Sylvan Lake Garden Club has really been a treat to learn about. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. It. Yes. And we've been joined by Helen Jane Peters and Tina Herzberg from the Sylvan Lake Garden Club. And now it's time for a new episode of The Biz where we sent Lawrence Nyland out to learn tips and tricks for taking care of your pets from local experts. Healthcare is an important issue for most families, but that also includes keeping our smallest family members, our pets, active and vibrant as well. And in this edition of The Biz, we visit Pet Value, a store that caters to keeping our animals as healthy as they can be. It has become amazingly, increasingly popular, yes. So I think a lot of us feed our pets better than we feed ourselves. And that's anything from grain-free, gluten-free, corn-free, holistic diets, uh, raw food and alternative feeding, frozen food. The pet industry and the pet food industry has changed so much, even in the last 5, 10, 20 years. We all grew up, for the most part, buying food at the grocery store. And we've learned, uh, especially recently, that that food is not going to be the best food for our pets for longevity and living a happy life. We're all familiar with the term holistic, but what exactly does it mean in terms of a pet's diet? A holistic diet is really kind of an all-encompassing diet that includes fresh meats, fresh, fresh vegetables, uh, fresh grains, uh, and is really a whole and all-inclusive diet to be able to take care of a pet uh, in a holistic way. So that holistic approach and really thinking of it, uh, taking care of not just one specific need in their diet, but the pet as a whole. So you think of the ingredients uh, kind of being something that you would serve to your entire family at a, a big Thanksgiving dinner. Food allergies worldwide are on the rise for humans, but pets are not immune to this growing trend. I think people are becoming more aware of pet allergies and food sensitivities and really kind of the, the few things that you can look for in your pet are one, hot spots, so are they having any skin irritation, uh, constant ear infections is another great indicator that your pet might have a food sensitivity or an allergy, licking and chewing at their paws, anytime you're really noticing obvious discomfort, we can help you find an alternative that might be causing that issue or that sensitivity and usually the biggest and easiest way to do that is by switching foods. When pollen, dust mites, mold spores, and other triggers come in contact with a pet skin, they can also trigger allergies, and bathing is a good remedy for treatment of these symptoms. Um, but based on dog breed and how long their coat is, how oily their coat is, yes, we, we love a dog wash, especially for heavier coated breeds, longer hair dogs. So our dog wash is fantastic. You can see behind us, each one of our locations has a hand-painted mural that's specific to the community. We welcome all animals into the dog wash, but we've seen pigs, goats, mini horses, uh, anything that you can bring in. But our dog wash can accommodate up to uh, a giant breed dog. We've had 250, 300 pound mastiffs in the wash, up to our uh, St. Bernard's and then we've got a smaller tub there in the middle where you can bring in your chihuahua and it's easier than doing it in the kitchen sink. For Civic Center TV, I'm Lawrence Nyland. For more episodes of The Biz, visit civiccentertv.com slash the biz. And now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week. People in the community inspiring, providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Alex Ho, owner of Silver Learning. <music> Thank you.
Alex has been in the business of helping people learn for many years, having taken over his family business at Sylvan Learning in West Bloomfield from his parents after 30 years of ownership. Helping people develop their educational skills is not only a passion of Alex's, it's in his blood. As the owner of Sylvan Learning, Alex helps develop programs that support our local students in higher learning, bringing them closer to comfort within their own learning style, while guiding them to grasp the concepts that are crucial to their educational development. Alex's supportive, calming demeanor helps ease the pressures of learning complex concepts and brings a sense of accomplishment and excitement when new ideas are learned and mastered and creates fun learning environments for all who pass through Sylvan Learning in West Bloomfield. Alex's naturally supportive nature and thirst for knowledge has helped many local students in their learning journey, which is why he is our Person of the Week. If you know someone who is making a positive difference, let us know. Send an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community, and we appreciate your suggestions. That's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes Mondays at 5.30 p.m. at Civic Center TV on Comcast 15, AT&T 99, and online in HD at civiccentertv.com. And, of course, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Civic Center TV. And for more Metro Detroit news, you can listen to me and Greg Bowman weekdays from 2 to 7 p.m. on WWJ News Radio 950. And for all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Brooke Allen. Thank you for watching The Splash.